this is Jeff Mesnick. I'm with the Channel Marketing Journal, and I'm excited to be here today with Stacy Nethercoat. She is the VP of Tech Data Cloud Solutions. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. We had a great conversation. We uh, hung out at uh, the Microsoft event for a little bit. Did you have a good yeah. good time there? Absolutely. Fantastic time. It's oh, a great event. Yeah. So why don't you share a little bit with us about what your role is at Tech Data. Sure, happy to do that. So as you said, I'm the Vice President for Tech Data's Cloud Solutions for the Americas, and in that role, I own the strategic direction as well as the execution of our cloud strategy. In my organization, I have just over 200 uh, specialists in cloud, and those would be in sales roles and business development roles, ISV onboarding, ISV development, marketing, um, it's really a full business unit. Great. So everything to do with cloud, do you, do you carry a bag also sometimes? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the road probably, I don't know, 60% of the time um, and out at, you know, partner events, tech data events, industry events. Uh, that's, I love that part of the job. Oh, great. So. One of the things that we hear a lot of people say who are, you know, kind of managing the cloud programs is this concept of cloud or die. So I kind of wonder, what does that term really mean for you? And what, you know, do you agree with that? Does every technology company have to migrate to the cloud or is it, are they done? No, no, absolutely not. No, no question at all. And in fact, um, I, I don't think there's ever a world where everything is in the cloud, and there's a lot of really great reasons um, for, for that to not happen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's why, for me specifically, uh, working with my colleagues in the other parts of Tech Data, we developed our hybrid cloud strategy, which uh, straddles or extends beyond uh, what I'll call public cloud, which is where I'm primarily focused and partnering up with our advanced solutions organization. And that's the group that owns servers and storage and, and virtualization and coming together to uh, present a whole solution. It could be private cloud on-prem, that's fine, um, with public cloud elements. And then additionally, we don't stop there. Um, we also bring into that strategy the endpoint um, the endpoint part of our business, because you've got to have devices, whether they be phones or tablets or PCs, that is going to access uh, envir the data or, or applications in both environments, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. And then last but not least, of course, is the edge and IoT computing. And so all four of those elements yeah. uh, make up our hybrid cloud strategy. And, and actually, you know, if you, you can read a lot of data or, or um um, analysts who are absolutely suggesting that hybrid is the hero environment, not everything's going to the cloud. I think depending upon the type of end user, um, whether they are very large or very small or in specific industries, that decision is going to be different um, based on, again, whether there's regulations in place or um, data concerns or a variety of other considerations. But Hybrid's the hero motion. So I like that. So the question, which I, I apologize, I'm just going to throw it at you. It's not on our list. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, a lot of businesses like Tech Data today are divided into the cloud and not cloud groups. Do you think that eventually goes back into that hybrid motion where basically it's not just going to be separate groups, but they're going to be merged back at some point? But there's no question that we're, we're, the, the way that we're working inside of Tech Data today is in a matrix form. Yeah. Um, because you're right, it, and it's, it's a challenge because you create these specialized organizations to get really, really good at specific um, objectives or specific strategies, but then then you end up potentially creating silos that don't lead to maximizing the innovation that Tech Data, for example, can bring to market on behalf of our partners. And so that's why for the last year I've been focused on our hybrid cloud strategy um, and working with the other elements of Tech Data. In part, um, the 
one of the missions I'm on, I'll say, is really to, to an education mission, specifically as as you see increasingly more and more ISVs, large vendors, call them classic yeah. um, solution aggregator or distributor vendors, are establishing themselves as offers inside of the public cloud marketplaces. So right. potentially, you know, if, if you're the leader of our advanced solutions group and you own servers, right? So if a workload's going to the cloud, then you're potentially losing a server sale. Now add to that, a software company, like let's use Veeam, for example, if Veeam is available direct inside of one of you know the major public clouds, not only is the server sale uh, not an opportunity, then the Veeam sale becomes not the opportunity. And so I'm trying to drive this hybrid cloud strategy yeah. to bring to market this joint value proposition around a flexible environment that's right for that end customer. That's fabulous. I love that. I mean, it really, the, honestly, it's one of the first times I'm hearing it, right? Which is maybe ironic, <laughs> but it's always, and I kind of liken it to the days when websites and print publications, they siloed those two pieces. So Ziff Davis had their print and they had their online and they, and they made them compete yeah. and they didn't really interact with them. So it was, you know, that was, in, in the end, was one of the challenges that they had to deal with and they didn't deal well with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. we've actually um, invested in specific resources that are purely dedicated to hybrid. I and mean, there's technical resources and business development resources right. because... What needs to happen is the partner experience needs the partner needs to experience tech data um, in a way that cuts through those individual silos because they don't care about those silos. Right. That should be an operating model uh, for tech data, which has served us well and will continue to serve us well in certain scenarios. But where the right answer is for this aggregated solution to um, be a mixture of on-prem and in the cloud, this is the way we've got to show up. So that's great. Well, we've kind of went off the uh, whole map here where I was going, but which is actually better because I actually really like this conversation. But I'm going to go back to one of the questions here. Um, you mentioned the ISVs. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges with becoming an ISV is going to market. So how does tech data support, whether it's the old, the new, uh, whatever stage an ISV might be in, when they come to you and say, you know what, how do we work with you? What, what's, the, what's the secret sauce with tech data and the ISVs? Yeah, that's, um, that's a great question, and, and I wish it were a simple answer, because <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually not. So, so there's a couple of different ways. So yeah. let, let's talk about um, ISVs um, that we're working with today as part of our Solutions Factory, uh, which has been in market, the Solutions Factory has been in market for about a year. Yeah. So we're working with vendors like NetApp and Veeam, and we are building and architecting a uh, solution that includes, and I'm just using those two as an example, there's actually 15 or 20 of those out there. Yeah. We're inside of our marketplace, our Stream One marketplace, a partner can answer a few questions and click a deploy now button and it will deploy and configure a NetApp or a Veeam environment sitting on Azure and ready to go uh, right away. So we're helping nice. our ISVs to the extent that they don't have necessarily a, a SaaS offer, for example, um, or they uh, want to be able to be offered in the cloud and perhaps they don't have that ready yet. Um, so we're helping ISVs who are not totally cloudy, I'll say, <laughs> um, deployed and easily by our partners as part of our cloud solutions factory. As another example, um, our marketplace has um, self-service onboarding APIs. So it's fully open to ISVs to um, technically onboard themselves to tech data. And I make that distinction because just onboarding yourself into the marketplace um, is, is really just um, a small part of being able to be successful in the ecosystem. And yep. so, so we spend a lot of time and energy. And it's one of the reasons why our 
ISV go to market team is so lar large is we really need to understand the maturity level of a particular ISV at right. a point in time. And there's many where we will, this is obviously prior to them technically onboarding into the, into the marketplace. Yeah. We're having a conversation around their relative maturity for channel. And it's not uncommon to say after some consultative um, conversation, you're not quite ready yet. This is the expectation of, you know, tech data's channel partners. And we need to have these things in place in order to provide the reliable experience. Many times they are mature enough, but they still don't understand or they haven't had the experience or the background, but they've got the, the building blocks to be successful. And so um, our uh, onboarding team works with those ISVs to develop specific plans. Um, and again, some ISVs want to go big, some want to go small. And yeah. so we've over time had to develop a level of flexibility. Some of it is handled digitally in order to be able to meet the demands of what the ISVs need, but also do it in a way um, that is predictable and, and scalable for tech data. That's excellent. So in essence, you know, because ISVs come in different shapes and sizes and sometimes they want to go direct and sometimes they want to do the channel and sometimes they don't know. So, yeah. you know, and sometimes they're just going to move, trying to move to the channel. I talked to, um, I can't remember the company name, but they were basically saying, we're trying to make the full transition over to the channel. And there is a lot that a lot of times they don't think about. It's very significant. Um, and, and many ISVs we talked to want to maintain the direct business that they already built, and they then also want to expand as part of the channel, which is a fine business model, and, and um, many, many are very successful at it, although one of the toughest pieces or toughest parts of that transition is making sure that there's you know, a clear alignment on what is channel, what's mm -hmm. going to stay channel, and will the channel... Um, operating rules or rules of engagement be respected, right? Um, and so that you don't have a scenario where, you know, there's sort of this mushy middle where sometimes it goes through channel, but other times it goes direct. Again, check data, I look at myself as, you know, and my organization as being responsible for ensuring that what we do bring to market is going to have a, um, a, a, an experience that our partners expect from us and that it's not, you know, you get one experience with this ISV and a different experience right. with another ISV. If that's going to be the case, again, that's when we're probably having the conversation that you're probably not quite ready. Um, and these are the three things to go work on. And, you know, let's talk again next quarter or in six months. That's great. So I'm going to skip to um, the last question here. Um, are there any, recent announcements that you uh, came out with or hinted to at, in, you know, space, maybe in conjunction with Inspire that you'd like to share yeah. with us? Yeah, so at Inspire, we had two specific press releases. One was around the Cloud Solutions Factory, mm -hmm. and we added five new solutions um, to, uh, to our inventory. Uh, and then additionally, uh, we had a separate press release around our Cloud Practice Builder, and that's our... Um, framework that we use for uh, enabling our partners not only on specific vendor solutions, but as importantly, maybe more important, you could argue is around their own business transformation um, for adopt either adopting cloud, accelerating cloud, or optimizing their cloud practice. So those were our two um, announcements at um, Inspire, and then coming soon will be an announcement on adding managed services to those cloud solutions. So oh, nice. um, partners, yeah, so so the part, many partners are managed service providers and we're certainly not looking to, to um, infringe on whatever those capabilities are. But there are quite a few partners who are very familiar, let's say with a Veeam solution or a NetApp solution, um, not as familiar with managing the infrastructure the infrastructure layer inside of Azure, for example, or inside of AWS. Mm -hmm. And so they will have the option to uh, buy that managed service through tech data. That's great. Yeah. So I, I like to always end with one last question, which I didn't prepare you for. 
<laughs> but I, of course. at the end of the day, I actually didn't even prepare you for any of these questions, really. <laughs> <laughs> so with all your travel, what is your favorite location you've had to travel to for business? Oh, uh, my favorite location. So it's actually, I'm going to say Barcelona, Spain. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Probably, I have, I've, I've traveled reasonably extensively in Europe, so I ha and I have not been to Asia at all. Okay. So given, given it's mostly been, you know, North American and European travel, yep. by far Barcelona, my favorite city. That's great. Well, look, thank you so much for being here today with me and for being My patient pardon. with our uh, slight technical dis difficulties in the beginning. <laughs> but uh, we look forward to hearing more from you, and I hope that we can do uh, other interviews in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thanks a lot.